Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in which we are playing as that Mr. Handsome Huey Long. So, like every normal campaign beginning, we, at least I, am going to show you the custom game rules. Pretty much everything is going to be on default, no idea what's going to happen, and let us begin as United States with no Iron Man mode on. So the mods we're using, are obviously, are Kaiser Reich, Planet of Peace Conferences, State Chester Tool Mod, Colored Buttons, and Colored Events, and I'm joined here with my cat... Thank you, who's having a great time with my shirts on my bed. Anyways, Kaiser Reich beta point one four, the Duke and the Herzog, which is the update for, let's see, it was for the Union of South Africa, which has a new focus tree. Very cool, which I hopefully might get to someday. And actually, let's see. And it's also, I think Natal has its own focus tree now, I think. But I can't remember. Anyways, since we're America, let's go ahead and try to reintroduce the Ghana Wagner Bill. While originally vetoed in 1932. <clears throat> The economic situation in America has deteriorated to the point where unemployment relief efforts are seen as the only way to prevent widespread collapse. President Hoover has indicated to the, to the Democrats in Congress that this time, he will not veto the relief bill. Well, let's see if it passes. Let's grab the tried and true stuff, all the normal stuff that you grab at the beginning of almost any Hoi 4 campaign. And we can do the land doctrine. What we're going to do, though, is look at the light tanks. I, I want to focus on some tanks in this campaign. And you know what? Since... We kind of know what the thumbnail is all about. Um, let's just say we're going to really build up in the south. Because the south could really use a few more uh, things, we'll call them. Yeah. A little bit more industrial support. Uh, I'm not going to really mess too much with anything here. Uh, honestly, my goal in this campaign is just to go as fast as possible to get to the end. But I'm still going to read all the events if possible. Uh, I'll let you guys train. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So, introduce. Cool. So, the U.S. in 1936. In 36, the U.S. is gripped by unrelenting crisis. Although able to avoid the horrors of the Weltkrieg, which allowed its prosperity to continue once in the 1920s, the German victory in the Weltkrieg, followed by the French and British revolutions, led to the Wall Street crash of 1925. This sent the U.S. spiraling into the Great Depression and allowed the Berlin Stock Exchange, oh my goodness, to take its place at the forefront of the world economy. The election of Herbert Hoover in 1928, while initially promising, failed to entirely to reverse the decline of the American economy, and by 36, the country had spent over a decade in the midst of the worst financial crisis it had ever seen. This fueled the rise of radical parties in America from the far left Socialist Party of America to the far right American First Party. Well, Hoover's contentious re election by means of the House of Representatives in 1932 and the ongoing Great Depression means that their problems are unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Uh, many throughout the country fear the upheaval that would result should one of these extreme parties come into power or should the Depression continue unabated. God save America, but I paused it because I wanted to do this real quick. Um, I said I wasn't going to do too much with the Navy, and I'm not, but I'm going to organize all the Navy into one big old fleet or one big old task force because I want to get a little bit of naval XP before we get too far. Why? Well, just because I think it'd be a good idea to do so because maybe we'll research some naval stuff before war breaks out. Go ahead and train. Good enough for me. So, voting rights and legation council. Uh, so, the legation cities were formed in 28 as a result of our intervention in the Zili Fengxin conflict that was soon going to spill out into open war between the two other powers in the Far East, Germany and Japan. While we obviously wish to end the conflict, we also found in our power to create a lasting solution to the imperial rivalry in China as well as push our own open-door policy as we force the other powers to merge with their concessions in chi into China into one conglomerate. Consisting of all official concessions in China as well as the 30-mile neutral zone, the Legation Cities, officially known as the International Mandate for the Chinese Concessions, also hosts a forum, the Legation Council, for the various powers with Chinese interests to resolve disputes and work together. Naturally, we have a vote on this council, and we are often the deciding factor between the Japanese and Germans, but the secondary powers mostly have it playing its second fiddle to us. Our voice is usually one that speaks for keeping the status quo of an open door to China for all powers, which helps, hopefully, lets everyone benefit without having to get too involved themselves with an individual Chinese faction. To American citizens, the legation cities represents not only a great way to get rich, but a shining example of American forward thinking and our commitment to peace. A perfect arrangement. Great. Then the bill was reintroduced. With assurances made by Her Hoover that unlike a 32 this time he will not veto, veto the bill, Democratic Senator Robert Wagner and Speaker of the House Jan Nance, John, Jans? John Nance Gardner have reintroduced their unemployment relief package. Uh, many in Congress feel that the package does not go nearly far, far enough, while what others wonder how America, in the midst of a massive economic crisis, will possibly ever pay for it. The presence of senators from the AFP and SPA also complicates things immensely. Even with Hoover's pledge, it's unknown if the bill has a real chance of passing. We shall see. I really hope it does, because if it does pass, it's actually really, really good for you. you get quite a few more consumer goods. Is that a different picture than normal? Huh. Kind of handsome over there. But uh, the people must reject this madness. Yeah, the bill, if it passes, is really good. If it doesn't, then, you know, whatever. Especially once Black Monday hits, but 
Long and redemand changes. As expected, the early challenges to the bill have come from the radical parties. Long and his senators have demanded a vast increase in Social Security provisions the bill provides, provisions most other senators say America could never afford. Jack Reed and uh, his party, meanwhile, say the bill doesn't go far enough to protect the average worker, particularly from exploitation by struggling cooperations. Uh, both parties have attracted a lot of media attention, att adding to the general sense of disorder and tension in Congress. Afghanistan goes to war with India. It's merely the fifth Anglo-Afghani war, that's all. And Black Monday. Oh boy. Coalition ticket. Oh crap, did I click on something? Oh, I clicked on something. Whoops. Oh, but I guess I clicked on the Great Depression. Ah, I was going to read that event, but you know what? It is what it is. Wow, that looks terrible, the Great Depression. The coalition ticket, though. The 36th election is looking to be one of the most contentious in American history. Many politicians within the upper circles of the Republican and Democratic parties fear that a victory by a socialist or America First Party would mean the end of America and the way of American life. In order to avoid this, a plan has been proposed within the halls of power to form a coalition ticket between the Republicans and Democratic parties with a farmer labor Senator Floyd Olson of Minnesota as a presidential candidate. This plan is unlikely to be popular with lower-ranking members of the parties, but it may be the only thing that can prevent the radical parties from gaining further strength. The coalition would debase the Democratic system, because I don't got 200 political power to spend. Crown's free sweeps the nation once we do this, because it really doesn't matter where we go with this. I'm going to grab two, because I don't really care for now. As America spirals ever deeper into the chaos, there's been a wave of crime throughout the country. Many of these criminals are getting uh, sensationalist news stories about their activities, especially gangsters like John Dillinger and the scandalous Bonnie and Clyde. Thankfully, the Bureau of Investigation has been working hard to catch these criminals and bring some order back to America. Of course, the AFP and SBA have been attributing these crimes to more decline and robber baronies, respectively. Stop right there, criminal scum. Ah, uh, st stability keeps going down. Senators break ranks after weeks of negotiations. A number of establishment senators have broken ranks over the coming vote on the bill. Most notably, Robert Wagner, one of the bill's proposers, sa who says he will not vote for the bill unless protections for federal unemployment insurance are re-added. Many other Democrat and Republican senators are concerned about the influence of the other parties and claim they will not vote for the bill if any concessions are made to the other group. Though others say that not according either party will make the passage difficult, if not impossible. President Hoover will need to intervene in order to save the bill. You know what? I think we can work with some of the... Uh, Long, longest. I think they seem kind of rational or reasonable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to have you guys train indefinitely. And we got quite a bit of naval XP, which is nice. Even though it's not going to really matter where we end up. So, I, and unfortunately, it does fail. After an incredibly close vote in Congress, the bill failed to pass. While several groups are declaring personal victory, protests have broken out in various parts of the country. There will be no relief for the American worker who have declared the government to be corrupt and dysfunctional. There will be considerable t time for blame, but the moment the Hooper government's concerns must turn to the growing violence throughout the American cities, violence which is expected to only worsen in the months leading up to the election. Hey, at least you know what? Other parties get influence. Cool. People always complain about a two-party system. Well, what about we have four parties and everyone hates each other? Hmm. U.S. Navy, uh, we do the War Department of Expansion. The U.S. War Department has, has seen a shrinkage over the last half decade. Through austerity measures, now it is vital that staffing be expanded and new innovators enter the department ready for reform. Nationalist Revolution in Cuba. A group of nationalists, the Autentico movement, has overthrown the Cuban government after weeks of strikes and protests by social sympathizers to destabilize the old regime. While well, they've yet to move against their interests in Cuba, their rhetoric is firmly, oh my god, anti-American, worrying. Uh, Japanese troops garrison uh, Tianjin. It seems that the economic woes have gone down hard in the legation cities, and they've decided to outsource much of their security operations to the Japanese to keep their economy afloat. While there's little we can do to stop them, there's been an uproar in the council over the shifting balance of power with calls for Japan not to abuse their position in, this, in the city. Worrying, to say the least. Absolutely. Send more troops. Uh, let's make sure we get some more influence. We have 41%, but 46% is better. Compromise with AFP. Recently, there's been results... Recent days, oh my goodness, have resulted in a compromise between many establishment senators and the AFP, with numerous extra provisions included for farm relief and unemployment protection, though nowhere near as far as the AFP originally demanded. Even so, Huey Long has declared this as a victory and is riding high in recent polls. Both Jack Daniels uh, socialists and a large number of Republican senators have declared this a betrayal of the American public. However, have they have vowed to sink the Garner Wagner bill when the vote comes. Um, well, it's, it's already sunk, but uh, we get more power. Great. Fair military or militias forming. With violence and instability sweeping the country, the AFP and the SBA have begun to form various uh, paramilitary militias. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, which they claim are necessary to protect the people. The AFP have called with the group the Minutemen, while the SBA is the Red Guard. Seen patrolling their strongholds in political rally, party rallies, these well armed and well equipped paramilitary units have already engaged in scattered, although extremely violent conflicts. We believe the paramilitaries are modifying civilian firearms, and the FBI's attempt to seize weapons and stockpiles are too slow to stop gun runners. This could turn bad very, very fast. This ain't good. Father Charles Coughlin, CBS Radio Broadcasts. Very, very nice. Three years ago, Father Charles. 
Cochrane, who became uh, began a weekly radio broadcast in America, and now is an audience of over 50 million people. That's a lot of people, especially in this in 36. He is a raving anti-Semite who claims that the syndicalist revolution in France was fomented by the Jew, and that the Berlin stock market crash is an international conspiracy of Jewish bankers, and somehow people still tune in. His hate speech will not be tolerated by the church, and the Pope is expected to make a decision whether to ask the U.S. government to shut down his broadcast, and so that his hateful message cannot reach the public. What? What's wrong with the Pope? This guy seems reasonable. Become a danger uh, to the public, shut him down. I hate what he says, but I'll defend his right to say it. Oh, uh, stability. Let's get. Uh, he's a danger. Shut him down for now. Let's see what happens. I'm not touching that. Nope. I want at least. Okay, we can't even build anything. Well, the bill fails. Okay. Death of Pius. Oh, well, who cares what the Pope says? He's dead, anyways. All right. Gallo seeks control of Ecuador. Very cool. Oh, I would have really liked to build up more in Arkansas, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. And we have no political power. Ah, oh, more FBI members. Oh, my goodness. Uh, now it's congressional bids. There have been a number of lawmakers from the American First Party in his brief life. Particularly in the South, from the 36th election represents an unprecedented number of people registering to run for office under the banner of the AFP and just as many, if not more, nationwide, pledging to vote with for them. St. Patrick's Day flood on March 16th, 1936. Warmer than usual temperatures led to the melting of large amounts of snow and stuff like that on the upper Ale Alleghe and Monogalia rivers. The rivers and the tributaries had already overflowed their banks and were soon threatening the city of Pittsburgh. On March 17, 1936, the water reached the flood stage uh, of the 25 feet. Then, overnight, heavy rain caused the water to rise even higher, and on March 18th, the water peaked at about 46 feet, 21 feet above the flood stage. Let's get some more research speed. This is the most worst disaster in the city's history, and local authorities have already requested federal aid. We must help the people. We have to help themselves. Uh, we're going to help the people. We're already out of political power, so what's more in a negative hole, you know? It's just a little bit more debt. That's what we're going to call it. Yeah, debt. Mm. So, you know what? Uh, Cuba seizes American plantations, as was feared the new Cuban nationalist government was violently seized control of the plantations and other business owned by citizens and Cubans friendly to our interests. Obviously, we must respond to such a slight, but by what extent condemn the move? Embargo and support opposition? Oh, you betcha. So, normally, I don't like to use militia divisions, because they're pretty, honestly, god darn weak, and I really don't like them. But with the way we're going to go in this campaign... <clears throat> I'm going to use them. I'm going to try to use National Guard divisions. I hate militias, like divisions, like I said before, but we're going to try to use them. Uh, status of the U.S. Army. We'll read that very soon after we read this. We'll get there. I'm getting there. Uh, War Plan Y. War Plan Y is a military action to contend with the domestic violence or insurgency. It's time to dust off the plan and deal directly with the growing violence in America. <clears throat> and we're not going to use heavy armor, so it just takes too long to produce heavy armor. Oh, uh, sad to the U.S. Army. The defense of the U.S. has always been an uphill battle. Stretched thin against the vast breadth of the North American continent, the U.S. Army has had little chance to distinguish itself throughout its 160-year history. It's won the bare minimum of victories to maintain American independence during the Revolution and the War of 1812. It has performed admirably against a corrupt regime in the Mexican-American War, but half of those forces would provide the seed for the fledgling Confederate States uh, during the ensuing Civil War. More recently, the army performed barely adequate to subdue its, the heavily outgunned Spanish and struggled to suppress the half-starved Filipino insurrection more than 30 years ago. Prevented from joining the Velcro on either side, it has suffered in both doctrine and technology with no tanks at all and a small air corps subsidiary to the ground forces. With a hobbled line that was the British Empire on the northern frontier and a cynical stronghold poised in the south, the U.S. Army must be asked to defend the Republic from enemies within and without, and few agree that they are up to the task. They'll have to, unfortunately, though, suffice. Bunch of god dang radical socialists in the south, I see, doing guerrilla warfare. Military legacy of the revolution, economic legacy of the revolution as well. Yeah. Increased radicalization, but we'll do the Stanley Cup first. Two teams have made it to the 36th Stanley Cup Finals. The Toronto Maple Leafs making their sixth appearance, and the Detroit Red Wings making their second appearance and still hungry to win their first cup. Only with a brief interruption at the first game in Detroit, with demonstrators by the Socialist Party of America disrupting the proceedings outside the stadium, the series has gone off without a hitch and captivated audiences in both countries. Who will take home the cup this year? Come on, Detroit! Uh, increasing radicalization with more Dems and rub pubs fighting among themselves as usual. More and more Americans are feeling alienated from the tradition of too big and flocking to the radical parties throughout the country. In these dark times, the distinction between genuine social reform and graft is hard to distinguish. Those under the radical banner and the political enclaves have received some social welfare. Share our wealth uh, donations from the AFP and international red aid from the SBA. God dang Toronto. Uh, the party machines of these radical utilizes mass media to a much stronger degree than either Republicans or Democrats. What a bunch of boomers. It is time uh, it's looking more and more like the 36th election will come down to a read or long. Oh boy. So unfortunately Canadians win. Toronto's vanquished Detroit in four game series before the Stanley Cup bringing the Canadian team their fourth victory in the finals. Once again the kid line of Charlie Conacher, Harvey Bush, Busher Jackson, and Joe Primu, Primau has brought the Stanley Cup to Toronto. Will win next year. Well, we'll see. More SBA members 
announcing congressional bids. There have been a number of lawmakers from the SPA in the past few decades, particularly the Steel Belt. In the 36th election, represents an unprecedented number of people registering to run for office under the banner of the Socialist Party of America, and just as many, if not more, nationwide pledging to vote for them. God dang. Special election in Washington. Following the death of w Senator Wesley Lloyd, a special election has been called in Washington to fill a seat. The front runners of SBA activist John F. McKay and Democratic Congressman John McMain Coffey. I love coffee. I'm out, though. Uh, polls have just closed, and the winner appears to be... I think John... I think coffee. Coffee's a good idea. I've been in special election in Jersey. Following uh, Senator A. Harry Moore's resignation in order to run for governor, a special election has been called in New Jersey to elect his replacement. The front runners are Democrat John Gerald Milton and AFP spokesman Charles Lindbergh. Polls are closed, and the winner appears to be... I don't know. That Lindbergh guy, he seems, he seems real rational. He seems like a really good choice for America, at least New Jersey at the very least. Basic machine tools, uh, dispersed industry is always the nice thing to do. I just wish we had a consumer good to use. Wish we had one factory. Oh, bait. Oh man, my cat is relaxing on my bed, something fierce. Pan Panama pressures Costa Rica. The Panamanians have begun a small scale military assault on the Koto region of Costa Rica, which they've had to claim on for some time. We should threaten intervention. Uh, let's see, threaten intervention. To, use, to prevent this turning into a full scale war, let's intervene in the May Day riots. May Day International Workers Day, this is a special holiday that the SBA celebrates with numerous parades and speeches and has since. Since its founding, generally things are peaceful, though there have been confrontations with the police. However, this time there, things are more violent than normal. Clashes between the socialists and the local police, backed up by the AFP, have occurred around the country. The question is, who is at fault? The socialists have declared that things were peaceful until the AFP and the police goons arrived at the scene. Uh, the AFP is saying that the socialists began by assaulting ununionized workers, and a blurry photos of claim are guns of the SBO were brandishing. The SBO were fault. Let's pause it. Let's see. Uh, we don't want them to get any more power, so Panama backs down. After hearing of American support for Costa Rica not willing to escalate the situation to a full blown conflict, the forces of Panama have begun to back down across the region. This is a victory for American diplomacy abroad. The Monroe Doctrine stands, and we get 10 whole political power despite us having minus 190 already. And we're almost ready for War Plan Y. We get stability, lose social liberalism, and get War Plan White, which will be a good, good, good thing. So, time's coming to dust off one of America's military color coded war plans. This time, this one meant for dealing with domestic disturbances and insurgencies. It cannot come a moment too soon. Its violence is escalating in areas where the AFP and SBA have been contending with local authorities for dominance. Minnesota and North Carolina are the two states where the violence is at its high, and at the moment we can only focus our efforts in one place. Let's see, focus on SBA or AFP. I'm thinking, let's, Minnesota, it seems pretty darn violent. Actually, you know what? I said this when I played as a federal United States as MacArthur, when he wanted to play as American Caesar. Um, yeah, Minnesota still seems a little violent, but that's okay. Deploy the National Guard. The violence caused by supporters of the American First Party and the Socialist Party of America is only getting worse. We need to increase funding to the National Guard units and put them where the efforts will count the most. Yes, yeah, send in federal troops, because... That will not hurt the issue and only make things better completely. Yes. Farmer labor flocks to the SBA. Minnesota, which has long been a bastion of farmer labor Senator Floyd Olson, has finally flipped. Many people turning away from Governor Olson on the direction of the IWW and SBA. Various unions have held rallies for the SBA and attendance far outstrips their, our ability to outshout them. Is this... Is it something in the water? Oh, my goodness. Well, we'll see what happens. Minnesota is a very special state. It's actually fairly large. It's a Midwest state. Oh, no, I've been to Minnesota a few times. They got a lot of lakes. They got a lot of lakes up in Minnesota. Wow, it's a lot of lakes. Even though I really did not like driving through there, it seemed a little boring. That's just me. Collapse United Baltic Duchy. The batch of maps made obsolete. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of companies that are based in Minnesota. Hey, look. Tanks. We could probably use those eventually. Hmm, I wonder why I'm making them. 36 artillery. Sure, why not? The de big death. The big death. The death of Big Bill Haywood? Well, oh no, how unfortunate. What a shame. Today, one of the titans of the industrial workers of the world, William Big Bill Haywood, has passed away. His death marks the passing of a torch. Elizabeth Gurley Flynn spoke at a funeral, saying history has a long-range perspective. It ultimately passes stern judgment on the tyrants and vindicates those who fought, suffered, and were imprisoned, and died for human freedom against political oppression and economic slavery. Many other leaders within the various union organizations, including his rivals in the AFL, also spoke at his funerals, as well as the leaders within the Socialist Party of America. Jack Reed also spoke at the funeral, ending a speech with some Haywood's quotes. If the workers were organized, or are organized, all they have to do is put their hands in their pockets and, up, and they have the capitalist caste whipped. A strike in an incipient revolution, many... Large revolutions have grown out of a small strike. Remember that you are fighting more than your own fight. You are fighting for the entire working class, and you must stand together. Syndicalism? Who needs that nonsense? All you need is uh, the good stuff called share the wealth. Okay. Southern Democrats align, voters align with AFP. The South has been considered the heartland of the Democratic Party, but this may not be the case for much longer, as polls oh, show a massive spike in voter registration for the AFP. On a radio broadcast, Huey Long spoke at length about share wealth and his plans for America. It seems that the AFP is growing larger by the day. Cool. And this 
update, point one four. I think, was this one with the Baltic States? It's look, the is looking pretty nice. It's not a huge focus, but that's okay. And we have Latvia. All roads lead to Riga. I should have checked them out before they collapse. Oh, they have a generic focus tree. Estonia has a generic focus tree, which really sucks. So, Lithuania obviously has its own unique focus tree. But Riga has its own focus tree. The Pearl of the Baltic seems amazing. Great heat wave at 36. This just ain't our year. Oh my goodness. I want to play as Riga someday. I have played as the United Baltic States before they got an update, I guess. So, Birthright restored. Reintegrate Estonia. Oh my goodness. Cool. A heat wave struck the continental U.S. and Canada, the most severe heat wave in the modern history of North America. The great heat wave started in the late June and went up over 100 degrees Fahrenheit as drought conditions worsened due to a lack of rain. Now, in July, the heat has reached all-time records. In Steel, North Dakota, temperatures have reached 121 degrees Fahrenheit, and Ohio temperatures have reached 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which was close to a time record high set in 34. This comes in a time of major political unrest with the America First Council, a major force in Midwest politics, and social and syndicalist forces gathering strength in the Great Lakes region. The drought is continuing, and over 3,000 reported deaths have been linked to it. Many people suffered from heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Farmers across the country saw the worst harvest on record, causing corn and wheat prices to skyrocket, and this heat wave does not seem to be giving up anytime soon. This just ain't all year. And cre creation of the international avant garde? Well, what a bunch of weirdos in France and the Union of Britain. What a bunch of weirdos. Let's see. Oh, they went syndicalists. Cool. Bringing out the National Guard. We'll, we'll read that as soon as we get the next focus done. In this one. It's hard to see. MacArthur's plan. Jordan MacArthur has raised a solid point. New York City and Texas are two of the most vital and vulnerable strongholds. MacArthur has a plan which you can see some of these areas secured. Shoot the violence. Escalate into a full-blown civil war. So bringing out the National Guard. The National Guard has deployed over for six months now, fighting to maintain security in a number of American cities, but there is a growing fear that the commanders within the Guard are not entirely loyal to the Republic. The many harbor sympathies for the AFP and SBA. More focus needs to be to put on strengthening the units that are, we know are loyal. We need to decide where to put focus on deployment for the time being. Focus on order in Iowa. Iowa's on fire? Tennessee's on fire? All I know is that Memphis is a very dangerous city to live in. Uh, uh, Iowa seems much more dangerous than Tennessee. Tennessee it pales in comparison when you compare it to Iowa. Yeah, Iowa is so much worse. Red Summer, the rem summer he has turned into violence and blood as cities, starting with Charleston, South Carolina, throughout the country, engaged in bloody racial riots as whites beat up blacks and burn black businesses. The number of lynchings that has occurred throughout the city spiked during the summer. In response, the African Blood Brotherhood and other elements of the SBA and CSA have begun arming and fighting back. The Socialist Party of America has defended their actions and further blurry photos, they claim, showed AFP members doing bad stuff and lynch mobs. Can this war this year get any worse? Gone with the Wind. Margaret Mitchell published her data novel Gone with the Wind, which immediately became a bestseller and may be nominated for the next Pulitzer Prize. Even Hollywood is taking notice and is planning a film adaptation, adaptation to be released next year. Set in the Old South during the American Civil War. Many see it as an analogy for the strained political situation in the U.S. Many America First Southerners claim that the novel supports their war cause. Frankly, my dear, I don't really give a damn. Ah, 20 more political power. What else can we do? And we have no support for a party. Well, it doesn't look like uh, the Republicans are going to get elected. And probably the Democrats either. There's a total of uh, 40 some support here. MacArthur speaks to Hoover. MacArthur has spoken to Hoover privately about a contingency plan called War Plan Y, a military plan for dealing with a possible armed uprising of the U.S. citizens. The plan will call on MacArthur to take emergency action to protect the country and re erect old barricades in Washington, D.C. This plan could be engaged with even from with outside Washington, D.C. at the Washington Arsenal. While the plan has obviously not been made public, we have at least have it as a contingency plan if the radicals enact one of the revolutions from within the government. Let us hope that it ain't needed. But we'll see what happens. Hmm. South Africa, what are you up to? Oh, they don't have Bayushin Lin as a core, huh? Villers, huh? Let's see. Is this segregation, racial segregation, wavering dominion? Cool. Poland elects a new king. The regency is finally over. Slavery in the High Commissioner territories, less stability. Alright. Still slavery, cool. Effects of Black Monday and Imperial Investment. Cool. Look at this plan. We'll read that as soon as we're done with something else. Uh, demand repayments of war debt. The UK incurred enormous war debt to us during the Bell Creek. The debt has been inherited by Canada. While it's unlikely Canada could repay it right now, demanding repayment will appease isolationists in Congress, whom we believe will join the political fringe, if not appease. So, there's a growing concern that America is descended into a possible civil war. And despite all efforts to maintain security, supporters of AFP and SBA simply have too much influence in some parts of the country. Douglas MacArthur has unveiled a plan to infiltrate key areas in either New York City or Southern Texas. Both are of high importance in New York for industry and Texas sports oil, and both are at higher risk to take over. MacArthur says that these efforts might still come to naught if the FFP and SBA's powers become too great, but he believes it would greatly increase the government's chances of maintaining control should it come to an armed conflict. Uh, let's see. 
I'd say, even though we love Texas, New York City is a pretty place to be important. We wouldn't want any syndicalist, socialist, uh, com communist, no, nah, I don't think there's things called communist, but totalist people. We don't, we'd prefer they don't get New York City. The Battle of the Overpass now. In Detroit, Michigan, the automotive capital of the world. Walter Reuther and Richard Frankenstein, leaders of the UAW Association, called a general strike against the Ford Motor Company and proclaimed themselves for unionism, not Fordism, demanding higher pay and fewer hours for automated workers. At 2 p.m. today, a photographer from the Detroit Free Press asked to take a photo of the leaders of the UAW standing on the overpass with a Ford sign in the background. While they were posing, a group of 40 men from the Ford Service Department approached them and from behind began to beat them with their batons. The group then continued their attack on some of the beret-wearing women pass prison to pass out leaflets. This will hurt us more than it hurt the Unionists. Violence reaches the political theater. For some times, the violence has been mostly between the supporters of the radical parties. However, recently, violence is now reaching the candidates and politicians themselves. Failed attempts on the lives of both Huey Long and Reed have occurred in the past few months. Both government shooting from a crowd, both failed, and both resulted in higher security. So several more local politicians have been stabbed during the campaign rally. Moreover, voters from ex both extremes are turning a blind eye to the violence done to their enemies. Great, more violence. Ah, it's got to get worse before it gets better, right? Oh, that's how most things go, and that's okay, right? I still need to play as India someday. India seems like a very interesting subcontinent to play as. Paraguay falls to syndicalism again. Right, left, can't they agree on anything? Uh, so, Huey Long speaks. The Democratic Party and Republican Party were just like the old patient medicine drummer that used to come around our country. He had two bottles of medicine. He played the banjo and sold two bottles of medicine, of course. I don't care about that right now. So, one of the bottles of medicine was called High Popolorium, and the one of those bottles was called Low pa 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 Hiram. Cool, finally, someday, so someone asked... Is there any difference in the bottles of medicine? And he said, yeah, of course. They're considerable. Both are good, but they're different, he said. The high papalorum is made from the bark off the tree that we take from the top down. And that low papahirum is made from the bark that we take from the root up. And the only difference is that I found between the Democratic leadership and the Republican leadership was that one of them was skinning you from the ankle up and the other one from the ear down. And when I, well, especially when I got to Congress. Cool. The great heat wave now is over. People from Vancouver to L.A. to New York and Washington, D.C. let out a sigh of relief as the great heat wave of 36 has come to an end and now a cold front is spread over North America. It will come to be known as the U.S.'s deadliest natural disaster of the 20th century with an estimated death toll of 5,000. Even as the heat wave ends, a new chapter in American history is about to begin. At least it's over. There's so many events in the beginning of this. Uh, reconciliation. Wait, do we not have... Oh, reconciliation. To piss everyone off. To piss both the SPA and AF parties off. I'm going to do ooh, reconciliation. Isolation is related, but at the cost of relations with Canada. We can try rebuilding those relations by offering a compromise. Some assistance from Canada now with the debt deferred until after the war in exchange will reduce the import tariffs from the Entente. Rep representatives retiring. Many Republicans and Democratic representatives have announced that this year will be their last year in Congress. With many retirees claiming old age motivated them, rumors, of course, uh, of gang intimidation by SBA and AFP congressmen reminds me of the congressional brawls between Charles Sumner and the Preston Brooks. Give me my cane, I'll start beating somebody. The unprecedented rate of their uh, retirement have given hope to the AFP and SBA that they can win these open elections. Y'all wanted more than two parties. What What did you think was going to happen? Hmm? Canada refuses. <clears throat> the Canadian government has responded to the demand of the flat refusal. The debt they say was never meant to be repaid until the home islands were retaken, as most was incurred by the UK. Well, you inherited that debt, a government which is now in exile. Even so, their refusal has done its job and fired up the isolation, isolationist elements of the American government. President Hoover's government has supported its needs as a cause of relations with the Canadians. Okay, cool, whatever. Up there, whatever. Canada. We want to do maybe some reconciliation, but you know what? They made their choice. I'm going to make ours too. And right here, let's see, we want to make sure we get this going. We're going to actually grab air, airplane stuff for now just because I think it's going to be pretty darn important. Uh, resource efficiency gain. We could do that. Let's see. We got tanks, signal companies, logistics, field hospitals. Do we really need field hospitals? We're going to grab maintenance companies. That's what we could really use. Grab some of that too. That'll be good. Just got to think for the long term. Because <clears throat> I do want to use tanks. I think... Okay, so, in the future, I will play as AUS twice. Once for the business plot and once for Peli. For, you know, Kaiserreich. That's going to be a l way down the road because we're playing AUS right now. Um, so, this one, I think we want to go with tanks. Like I said earlier. Uh, that being said, when I play as the American Union State again, remind me to not use tanks. Just because if we use tanks now, we'll do something else different next time. Violence between the SBA and AFP and a number of major cities, conflicts between supporters of the American First Party and the Socialist Party of America have broken out into violence. Partisan, flat fights, and even shootouts are starting to become a regular occurrence throughout the nation as the country spirals ever deeper into chaos. While public eruptions are easy to counter, the enclaves these radicals have cut out of city blocks run on graft are harder to stop. Oh, they lose power? Oh, that's not fun. Come on. They're just shooting each other. Let, them, let the market decide what they're doing. And by market, I mean social attitudes. Ah, radar station. Sure, why not? 
Because in this campaign, when we get a navy, which I'm not focusing on now, since when you spawn as American Union State, it means absolutely nothing with these ships, for the most part. Um, I want to try carriers. I want to try to have really good carriers. So let's actually look at this. Uh, wow, that's a lot of cost. That is a, an extreme cost, but that's that's kind of okay. Uh, let's see. I don't really care about using dreadnoughts, but we'll use them eventually, maybe. That is so high, I don't want to use them. Convert a battleship hull. Nope. Nope. Cruiser cruiser hull. Nope. Bink, you okay? Cruiser subs. Uh. Cool. Reconciliation with Canada. Well, at least we try to do that. We try to extend an olive branch. The U.S. Navy, though. The American Navy, an institution whose history is so deeply interwoven with that of the nation as a whole, has been in a state of decline after years of neglect. No more! We must again turn our attention to the naval affairs. Uh, oh yeah. Give us better tanks. Canada agrees to compromise. You bunch of Canadian maple syrup drinking peoples. So, the Canadian government has reluctantly agreed to the compromise, giving us repayment now and accepting the deferment until the home islands have been retaken. In exchange, a trade agreement has been put in place with the Entente, something that's likely beneficial for all of us. The main downside is that the agreement has been viewed as treachery by the AFP and SBA, both of whom claim our corrupt government has betrayed the very people they fired up only moments for it. And this is why I went with this way, with way for uh, compromise, so that, that both sides would get more influence. Gotta play both sides, man. Gotta play. I really want more tanks. Um, since we have a little bit of arm XP, since we've been training, we're going to keep those guys. Infantry divisions are going to be fine for now. Armor divisions. This is actually 20 combat width, which is actually really good so far. So I'm going to actually see if we can make them maybe a little bit bigger. Unless there's something else I have to do here. Not really. I really want to make sure we have good, good, good light tanks. So the presidential election. The results are finally in from what has probably been the most ideologically contested presidential election the U.S. has ever witnessed. Well, wait until 2020. None of the four major parties that have secured enough votes in the Electoral College to outright win the presidency, and as a result, the House of Representatives has once again asked to vote on the winner of the election. This is probably not the end of our pro problems, but for the time being, victory goes to... Well, let's take a look at the parties real quick. So we got Farmer Labor, Republicans, 7%, that's pretty bad. Democrats are only 12% combined. Uh, let's see, SPA is at 34, while AFP is also at, not also, but uh, 18, 40. Most support Republicans. I'm, I'm thinking, I think the long dong wins. You know, every man a king, but no one wears a crown. Ah, look at that handsome guy. Actually, this portrait of him is okay. I, I kind of hope someday they update him because he looks, he looks okay. It took me a while for the thumbnail uh, to find a really nice real photo of Huey Long, which I think looks honestly better than this. But what? That's just my, that's just my opinion. SBA contest election results. Members of the Socialist Party of America have refused to accept the demands of our free and fair election, claiming that the House of Representatives system has subverted the will of the majority. Well, this is a republic, not a democracy. Jack Reed has said as much and called the whole of Congress reactionary for his injuries or for this injustice. Same thing. Independent newspapers from inside the SBA have reported that the AFL are beginning to show cracks in his solidarity with Reed. God dang Reed. We lose stability, but what is stability to a nation that has minus 69%? Nice. Cool. Uh, let's keep getting light guns because we want to make sure we have the best light cruisers. The best light cruisers ever. I love cruisers. Wow, China looks like a mess. I need to play as China again someday. I played as a left KMT before. But I need really to play as them again someday. Hoover criticizes government. How dare you, Hoover? How dare you? Hoover, Hoover has been vocal after the election and has openly criticized Long and the American First Party as being a dangerous choice for the country. What do you expect? You have four parties to choose from. Hoover has encouraged both of the Republicans and Democrats to form an alliance to keep Long in check. But he don't matter no more. What did you expect when you wanted more parties? You want people to work together? No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get some deck armor. Because I always like deck armor. Just at least a little bit. So that light ships can't pierce these guys. Even though having more planes would actually be pretty awesome. That's okay. I doubt this will do anything for us, but go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to put you in a great place called uh, Mobile. Mobile. Okay, auto saving. Thank you. Mobile. I always like to say mobile, but I think that's a little wrong. There you go. You know what? There you go. Improved carrier holds. Oh, this is a heavy cruiser. Oh, my goodness. So, stats of the U.S. Navy. Oh, uh, we'll deal with this cruiser later on. And for now, just make some more convoys. It doesn't really matter. Cool. 
Status of the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy, long after the daring ch darling child of the U.S. defense establishment, has been a strong force in global maritime affairs for nearly 50 years. Arrival even to the valuable Kaiser Militia Marine and Royal Navy at their height in the Vell Creek is defending American shores and Sally forth to spread stability and democracy for the nigh on 160 years. From John, pa John Paul Jones' raid on the British mainland to the Battle of Manila Bay, the Navy has provided the security needed by the Republic from those that would infringe upon our independence from the beyond the seas. All is not well in the modern day, however. The Navy ships are getting old. Her flagships, Valkyrie, get a dreadnought, so even as Germany and Syndicalists engage in a new naval arms race, and the tattered remnants of the Royal Navy lick their wounds. New carriers have been commissioned, but they're nowhere near ready to take on the Imperial Japanese fleet. The Marine Corps fares better, hardened by, as they are by constant action in tropical lands, or locals, uh, but they are small and only a few regiments strong, and are powerless to, in fact, to fact, increasing tension at home from the far-flung island bases. The Honor Guard in Washington, D.C. looks increasingly powerless as violence in the nation's capital increases. Our white ships... White ships might dominate the waves, but many question whether it will be enough to face a gathering storm on the horizon. Semper Fortis. And now we are out of focuses to do. We got a good amount of political power, but you know what? It don't really matter where we're going. It really doesn't. Since there's nothing we can do, we're getting tons of PP. But unfortunately, none of this really matters in the end, because, uh, well, everything gets reset once we become the AUS. The Liberian government, crippled by the effects of Black Monday on top of their overwhelming national debt, has sent an envoy requesting the American government assist with a bailout. We have our own issues to deal with, but the amount they desperately need is small by comparison. Well, we will. And we'll guarantee us a continued ally in Africa. How should we respond? Of course we'll help. No questions asked. Well, maybe questions asked. Give me just one moment, please. Okay. My apologies about that. I had to see someone leave the house. Okay, then. Poland's looking good. Actually, Poland, they're doing the rights back, I think, right? Oh, no. They elected a new king and they went their own way. Oh. Well, good luck for you. Good luck. Who's in what faction? Uh, Belgium's in the f in their faction with the Reich's Pact, which is fine. Whatever. Italian government falls. Cool. Italian Federation, huh? New Year's Day strike. In protest of the election results, the SPS launched a strike on New Year's Day with its crippled industry the industries of the North. Councils of trade unions and councils of professional workers are set up to run the cities of steel belt during the strike. The Hearst newspapers have demonized this to be similar to the general strike that set up the British Revolution. Oh, I don't want to click on that. Support the auto industry. Huh. The Federation restored. Um, I've never played as an Italian nation here. Someday I will. Someday. Cool. Oh. Emilio, huh? Now let's go over here. It is 37, so let's grab some more output. That'd be kind of nice. This year, it might, it might be a bloody year. You know, you never know. And we have the co-prosperity sphere over here. Oh. They're kind of influencing Transvaal. Transvaal. Trans Amur, but... Not really. I don't understand why they, uh, they... Oh, no, okay, now they're pink. Earlier they weren't pink. So long's inaugural address. The country, at, today, has social problems that has forced the American people to turn to radical solutions. The two-party system is broken down, and Huey P. Long is sworn to be in as the 31st president of the U.S., with William Lemke being sworn in as a vice president. And a stern speech to Washington, D.C. Long has pledged to defend the interests of the people and put the interests of the regular Americans above it and everyone else. However, the AFP's slim majority in Congress means that it may find challenging to pass meaningful legislation, especially in the Senate, where the SBA senators have promised to filibuster any law they see as detrimental to America. God bless America. Time for another focus. I know this video is going to go on a little longer than normal. I usually like having my first episodes like 30 minutes long, but I want to get to the Civil War as fast as possible. So, fight the anarchists, pass the relief bill. I think we'll have to fight the anarchists. Long's dream of sharing the wealth cannot be achieved so long as the SBA has a chokehold on American labor. With general strikes ongoing since the beginning of the year, they must be brought down before America can live, and Long bans the SBA from Congress. In a fire speech, Long declares that his intended reforms would have to wait. Or far more pressing importance was the SBA and its insidious influence over America. The ongoing New Year's Day strike is, is its doing, and it is America's number one public enemy. An executive order banned, by the, banned the SBA from Congress and named the Minutemen as acting with emergency invested authority as ex executors of the president's will. While some in the halls of power are relieved to see action be taken against the SBA, many more are alarmed by President Long's use of executive power. So must be it. It's okay. Things are just going to get better from here on out. No worries. Nothing to see here. Everything is peaceful. Yes. We want to restore stability to the nation by cracking down on our political enemies. That's all. You know, just normal things. Just normal things. Got tons of that. So, 
Declare them terrorists, a bunch of terrorist scum. So out of national concerns due to the anarchistic nature of the Socialist Party of America, Huey Long has passed an executive order that has declared them an, an illegal organization which seeks to overthrow the country, and as such, all four shall be used to oppose them. Long has drawn a direct comparison between the SBA militias and with terrorist attacks that occurred on Preparedness Day in 1916 and Wall Street in 1920. The militias are now subject to the sedation after 1918, prosecuted as an anti-recruitment and vigilante group. Excellent. All right, we are February 10th. And we're about almost 40 minutes into this video. Oh my goodness. We are almost there. We are almost there, my friends. Reed, of course, defies the order, and we, which we get maintenance companies. That's a weird transition, but okay. Re Reed has publicly denounced the order as being unconstitutional and is an act that would provoke the country's workers against Long. Reed has organized large rallies and protests against him with the Red Guard there to keep the workers safe from the Minutemen. The Cairo Con Con Congress, cool. Uh, let's see. These highly reported on... on these highly reported on protests have seen union scabs with, beaten without interference from the police, which calls into question Long's ability to protect Americans. Rely on the police to keep control. Well, that's why you got the Second Amendment for a reason. All right, then. Let's see. 37. Things are really breaking apart here in the country. It's not a good time to be an American, but that's okay. Sometimes we got to do what is necessary. Let's grab some of this, because I might want to get some more rubber later on. I think I've already... Oh, wait. We wanted to edit this as well. Let's see if we can do that before we get any more events that would kill us off. A rapid fire guns, escort cruisers, yes please. Anti air one. Fire control zero. Sonars, you might as well put those on. Armor two, nothing else. We already did that. Uh get some aircraft facilities. Oh we already have one of those air. Uh then do no wait. Back. That's not bad. Cool. Not a bad light cruiser, if I do say so myself. Union workers and police clash. In an unexpected move, the police have refused to enforce the various ex executive orders. Uh, within Chicago, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and other cities scattered throughout the seal belt, they have declared a police strike in solidarity with the workers. While they work to keep order, police union leaders publicly declared that they would not follow the laws of the King Long. King Long. Thus, Long called in the U.S. Army to enforce the laws. Send in them, them big boys, because nothing could ever go wrong with that, right? Nothing would ever go wrong with that. Never, ever. Uh, let's see. Minimum clash with the SBA. When the Minimum arrived in the steel belt to enforce the laws of the president, they were immediately set upon by members of the SBA and supporters. Shootouts quickly became commonplace, and the violence quickly spread throughout almost every major city in the steel belt. It's quickly noticed that the government has no remaining authority within the steel belt. Sending the biggest boys we've got. The biggest boys. I, I think Mississippi could use all the extra people down here. Just saying. Not for any particular political reason, but just in general. They could probably use that. For now, interwar bombers. Let's 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 focus a little bit more on tanks. Oh wait, we're gonna need a lot of motorized as well. Oh, I forgot about that. Interwar armor. I love that, but we don't have the means to help that out. Yep. MacArthur and army remove Long. Long support in DC has finally bottomed out. MacArthur marched into Washington DC to restore order, and having declared Long to be a tyrant, attempted to arrest him at the White House. MacArthur's marches reminded many in DC of Cox's army in 1932, except these men are motivated to preserve the status quo and were cheered instead of boot. Having been tipped off by the AFP informants and MacArthur's command staff, Long was able to say head of the traitors general and has escaped to New York, New Orleans, or oh, Nolans. MacArthur has chosen to inhabit the White House and coordinate an investigation into Long from the executive chair. Civil war is imminent. My allegiance was to the Republic of MacArthur, to democracy. Oh my goodness. Terrible. Treasonous and terrible. President Long declares American Union State. Huey Long has escaped in New Orleans and declared that the General MacArthur is a traitor to the people of America. He has gained ready listeners among a number of Southern governors, all who have recognized that they no longer recognize MacArthur's authority and demanded his resignation. Long has spoken on the radio, urging all Americans to support the legitimate president and fight against the tyranny MacArthur represents. We're going to stand by the country. And my friends, that is all the time for that we have today. And as you can see, we have no XP. No naval experience, and unfortunately, no navy. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button for Huey Long. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you all tomorrow when we will begin the Rumble for America's Soul. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.